is conic sections. Now, when I talk about conic sections, pretty new to you guys. I know this says parabolas review, but in all honesty, this is a new form of parabolas. It's more in depth than parabolas than we've ever gone. Um, but we're going to talk about parabolas in lesson 8.1. I'm hoping to get through with this lesson today. We'll see how things go. Um, and then we'll talk about, we'll spend a couple of days talking about ellipses and a couple of days talking about hyperbolas. And those are our three, I guess, circles go along with ellipses. Those are our conic sections here. So when we talk about parabolas, you guys are familiar with parabolas, yes? Maybe not all this fanciness that goes with it, but you're familiar with parabolas. And we're going to get more in depth here, okay? The basic equations we're looking for, we've got a left column and a right column. But these are the basic equations that we're going to be working with with parabolas. And it's kind of the vertex form of the equation in that you can see the vertex. And so when you go to graph it, it makes it pretty easy to graph it by hand. So I'll refer to these as left column and right column. X minus H squared equals 4P times Y minus K is the left version as opposed to you're flipping your x and y parentheses here. So y minus k squared equals 4p times x minus h. In both cases, you'll notice the vertex is represented by hk, the vertex being the point at the base of the parabola, yes? Okay. We're going to talk about axis of symmetry. Traditional parabola, x equals h is our axis of symmetry, yes? Because axis of symmetry is what runs through the middle of the parabola, cuts it in half, makes the parabola symmetric about it, and that is x equals h. And I'm just going to focus on the left for a moment. Then we're going to talk about something called a focus. And you'll notice a focus here is a point inside the parabola. And the focus is a point that is equidistance from, how do I want to say it? can't remember the exact definition, but it has to do with being equidistance from, what is it? The vertex and both sides of the parabola, I think. I don't remember exactly how the wording is. But we'll have a focus. Our focus is, notice the H and K, and then plus P there. And we'll get down to what P here in a moment. We're going to talk about directrix. Directrix being a horizontal line that is perpendicular to your axis of symmetry. Okay, so there's your directrix. It is the same distance from the focus, or from the vertex, as the focus is. So the distance here from the vertex to the focus is the same distance as the vertex to the directrix. Okay, and that is going to take us, we're kind of jumping around here, but to focal length. Okay, so you have a nice picture here, right? That has all the information about what these things mean which will be quite helpful. So focal length is the distance from the vertex to the focus and the distance from the vertex to the directrix. Okay, that vertex is equally in the middle, so those are both the focal length, and that is P. The focal width is the absolute value of 4P. The focal width is your distance across here, okay, across the parabola through the focus. Okay, now I skipped. This left column is when the parabola opens up or down. What type of parabolas have we worked with? Parabolas that open up or down. What's the difference in this right column? We're going to now add in parabolas that open left or right. Okay, I might have reversed my left and right but because I'm backwards here, but actually I think I had it right. So parabolas that open left or right. You'll notice vertex is still the same. Your axis of symmetry, instead of being a vertical line like x equals h, is going to be a horizontal line. You'll notice um, the focus and the directrix, the plus and minus p, are now on the h part instead of the k part. Focal length and focal width stay the same. Okay, so take this picture, shift it on its side, and now you're talking about the right column. Okay? Now, this chart is going to give you a lot of information. You're going to want to have it by your side when you do homework, okay, because it's going to give you everything you need here, 
Okay? So, let's go down and look at example one. Okay? Example one, well, excuse me, one A. We're just being asked to write the equation of the parabola given the following information. So, if I go back here for a moment, in order to write an equation, you have to know three things. You have to know H, you have to know K, and you have to know P. Okay? Whichever equation we pick to write, we have to know H, K, and P. Which means we have to know the vertex and the focal length. Okay. Now, let's look at what information they give us. Directrix is x equals 2, and the focus is negative 2, 0. So the first question I always consider is, do I need to be working with the left column information or the right column information? And you have it all on one paper in front of you. I have two <coughs> different screens here. But the directrix is x equals 2 and the focus is negative two, zero. My hint is directrix is x equals two. Is this going to be a left column parabola that opens up and down? Or is this going to be a right column parabola that opens left and right? What do you see that tells you? Right. Okay. Right here, directrix says x equals. If the directrix says x equals in my right column, and what are we provided in this problem? Directrix is x equals 2. So that means as we go through and work this problem, we're going to be writing an equation of that form right there. Okay? So I'm going to, I don't know that I like this being on two screens thing. Okay, so what I'm going to sit here and think right now is I want the equation y minus k squared equals 4p times x minus h. That is my goal of the equation I'm writing. Okay, in order to write this equation, I'm going to have to know hk and p. Now, there's a couple different ways we can do this. And this will be one of those things that I'll kind of teach your own. Some of you will want to draw a picture. Okay? Some of you will need to draw a picture. Some of you will be able to just look at this information, pair it up with what's in the chart, and figure it out that way. I'm going to do a little bit of both because I think you need to see a little bit of both of how it all comes together. And the more you get a feel for it, you'll be able to kind of have an idea of what you want to do. So right in this little space right here. I'm going to try and sketch a picture. Okay? Nothing fancy, just something to get me going on this. Directrix is x equals 2. Well, if you go back to the sketch up top, the directrix is a line, yes? What does the line x equals 2 look like? You got a 2 on the x-axis and you draw a line through it. So that is the line x equals 2. Okay, that is your directrix. Okay, it's the line x equals 2, it is your directrix. What else do they give me? The focus is the ordered pair negative 2, 0. Where's the ordered pair negative 2, 0? So right there, my focus is right there at that point. I'm just taking the information and Drawing a sketch with it, right? Now, which way is my parabola going to open? Based on where the focus is and where the directrix is. Is 
that make sense if we say left? Because if you go back to this picture, what's happening? The focus is where? It is inside the parabola. And where's the directrix? It's outside the parabola, parabola, perpendicular to the line of symmetry. Does that make sense? Now, be smart here. Where's my vertex? How do we know it's at zero, zero? Because the vertex is equidistance from the focus and the directrix. If the focus is too left, the directrix is too right, where does that make my vertex? Right there. Okay, that's my vertex. Ordered pair, zero, zero. I'm just sketching. Who knows if that my parabola should be wider or skinnier? Who cares at this point? It's a sketch, right? And we did all of that just by looking at the information provided. Okay, so one thing we learned is that our vertex is zero, zero. What does my chart say about the vertex? What letters do those represent? HK. So we know that H is zero and K is zero. It doesn't happen very often the vertex is at zero, zero, but you know, we'll take it while we can get it. So right there, I know that K is zero and H is zero, my equation. What else did I say we have to know? P. A couple of different ways we can find P. And I have two different directions, and I'll show you both. Technically, by looking at my graph, I can find P. Because what is P equivalent to? The focal length. Where is the focal length? Between the focus and the vertex, or between the vertex and the directrix? Do we already know that length? We already know by because of our picture that that length is 2. Now, there is a catch in that our parabola opens left, and so we have to think about positive versus negative. A parabola opening left is going to be similar to a parabola opening down, and that we have to throw in a negative. Okay, but one valid way is to say, oh, hey, there's a picture. I know from ver vertex to focus is 2, and so I know that's my focal length, that's P. Okay, the other way I can look at this, they told me the directrix, right? They said the directrix is X equals H minus P. So I can use that. I can use, I'm going to try and... We are told the directrix is x equals 2, and according to my chart, the directrix is x equals h minus p. Gathering information again. But if x equals 2 and x equals h minus p, can we set those two equal to each other? Okay. If x equals 2 and x equals h minus p, I know that h minus p must equal 2. But what do we already know about H? We already discovered H is 0. So 0 minus P equals 2. Or in other words, negative P equals 2. Long story short, P is negative 2, however you want to think about that, right? <coughs> Does that match with what we already decided? Yeah. We already decided the focal length right there is 2, okay? It's negative because my parabola opens left. So if you don't do what I just did here algebraically and you just look at the picture, just remember, if it opens left, that's open, that's like opening down, and we have to have a negative value. Okay. Can we write our equation? 
P is negative 2. If I write this equation officially, y minus k, so y minus 0 quantity squared equals 4 times negative 2. And what is 4 times negative 2? Negative 8 times x minus h, which is x minus 0. Most of the time, I would leave my equation like that. I'm not going to leave it like that this time because I have some zeros in there. And with the zeros, you can just drop them out. Okay, so for this particular problem, I'm going to say y minus 0 squared is y squared equals negative 8 times x. If my vertex was anything other than 0, 0, I would have left it in that original form, though. <clears throat> okay. Questions there? I showed several different ways how to do almost every part of this, I think. When you get to doing this in your in homework, it will be to your, you know, to each your own, right? Okay. All right, try part B. Okay. Same thing. Maybe you need to draw a picture. Maybe you don't. I'm always going to kind of introduce a picture. But you can also look at the chart and kind of decide there. Now, if we just look at this as is, vertex is 3, 4, and focus is 5, 4. Go up to your chart. Can you decide if this is a left column or right column parabola just by that information? Vertex is 3, 4. Focus is 5, 4. Get rid of. Vertex, it was 3, 4 and 5, 4. I don't remember which was which at this point. I would think, I would say we could tell. Call it magic if you like, but you can tell in my opinion. <coughs> Any thoughts? Or am I the only one seeing past the magic that Kylie is calling it? <coughs> Here's my hint, guys. These both share the same y value. Okay? 3, 4, 5, 4. They share the same y value. And that was my vertex and focus, right? So here it's hk and h comma k plus p. Over here it's hk and h plus p comma k. Where do they share the same y value? You see what I'm talking about there? Okay, they both share the same y value and that they both have k is going to be what? Four, yes? Because three, four, and five, four. So K is going to be 4. We technically know H also. I forget if it's 3 or 5 at this point. 3. three. three. Sorry, the problem with not being on the same screen. Okay. And then I just have to figure out H plus P. Would you have to draw a picture for this? No, you don't have to. However, I'm going to just, or at least I'm not drawing a full picture, but just something to give us an idea here. Now, based on the idea that 3, 4, and 5, 4. I'm just going to draw a first quadrant here for my sketch. Okay, so I have a vertex at 3, 4. I'm going to put V for vertex. Can you handle that? Yeah. And then at 5, 4... I have my focus. Which way does this parabola open? To where? To the right. Because the focus is where in relation to the vertex? The focus is inside the parabola, yes? So right there, I know that my parabola opens right. And since my parabola opens right, that means I am looking at that second column that we already talked about, yes? So now you have a picture. If you 
were struggling with my magic earlier of knowing it, you know, how it was, does the picture make it obvious? Mm -hmm. That's what I'm hoping here, okay? So I know when I get done, I'm going to be filling in the equation. Y minus K squared equals 4P times X minus H. Okay? Are you okay with figuring that out one way or the other? Draw a picture, don't draw a picture. I don't care. I'm going to tell you what, though. If you come to me for help, I'm probably going to help you draw a picture. Okay? And then I will take you the other way, too. Okay, so let's see. What do we know? We know the vertex was provided as 3, 4. I think I heard Hannah say it. What do we know about 3 and 4 then? Those are H and K. Right? I love when they give you the vertex. It makes life so easy. So H is going to be 3. K is going to be 4 here a little bit. Okay. They also give me a focus. And they give me a focus of 5, 4. And if you go back to, so if you go back to the chart at the top, yes, which column are we in? We're in the right column, yes. When we look in that right column, it says that this is H plus P and K. K matches up, right? Well, be smart here. If H is 3 and H plus P is 5, what's P? P is 2. I guess we get P is 2 again. Oh, well. Okay, so use that information right there that H plus P equals 5. So 3 plus P equals 5. P is 2. Should P be positive? Yes. And why is P positive? Because it opens to the right. And opening to the right is equivalent to opening up. And parabolas that open up have positive coefficients. Parabolas that open down or left are going to have negative coefficients. Okay, did you write your equation? Y minus K squared. So Y minus 4 squared equals 4 times P, 4 times 2, so 8 times X minus 3. Stop there. No, I don't want you to distribute. No, I don't want you to square that out. I want you to stop there. Okay? This is the standard form of the parabola we're going to be working with right here. I forgot to mention, could you have just looked at the picture to find your P value? Because P is the distance from the vertex to the focus, yes? That's pretty obvious on the picture, isn't it? That is a distance of 2. P is 2. And it's positive because it opens to the right. Always ask yourself on that p-value, positive or negative, to double check. So far, so good? I guess the real test will be when you go to sit down and do this on your own. That's the real test. So. How far are we going in our notes today? Um, hopefully all the way. Okay, C. One more like this, and then you'll have some to practice at home. Okay. This time, we know the parabola, and they, they always give you a mixture of information, right? I can't begin to practice all the ones you're going to see in homework because they never give you the same information. So you just have to take the information they give you, take the chart, and see what you can figure out. Opens left. Vertex is negative 3, 2. Focal length is 2. I'm looking at my notes, and I don't even have a picture drawn in my notes on this one because they provide everything you need, rather obviously, if you ask me. Okay, so dissect it for me. What do you know? It's not science, but we're going to dissect. Okay, 
H is negative 3, K is 2, because my vertex is the ordered pair HK. I don't even need to know which column I'm in, do I? The vertex is always HK. So right there, I know H is negative 3, K is 2. Okay? Okay. So P value is negative 2. Right here, focal length is P, yes? So if you just look at the fact that focal length is 2, we're going to say P is 2. But what do we know? It opens left. So because it opens left, that means P is negative. So because P is negative, in other words, because it opens left, I'm going to say P is negative 2. Okay. Which equation are we filling in? The one from the right column, yes? Because it opens left or right, we're going to use the one that starts Y minus K squared equals 4P times X minus H. Yes, these have all been in the right column, but could you do the same stuff with the left column? Yeah. Okay, what do we have? Y minus 2, quantity squared, 4P. Wait, what did I say that? Other equation? <coughs> what? What did I say the other equation? Because it opens left? No. Opens left or right is your right column. There's... Left and right, and there's up and down. There's left oh. and right, there's up and down. Okay. No, get it figured out now, right? She's blonde, guys. She's blonde. Okay, so I'm using this one. All of ours today have opened left or right. So that's why I keep going back to this equation, yes? Okay. So y minus 2 squared, 4 times p, negative 8, x minus... Negative 3 becomes x plus 3. Okay. Sorry, I guess I never filled in the numbers h, k, and p underneath them. But we got the idea by now? <coughs> hey, guys. Give these a try. Okay. This is that 12 through 30 evens is problems like this. They won't all be left or right. You'll have to do some up or down. Okay. But see what you can do with them, okay? <coughs> okay, let's look at the back side. And on the back side, even if we don't get through all of them, we'll survive. The back side is graphing a parabola on a graphing calculator. So these parabolas we just looked at, the equations we just wrote, can I plug these equations, like for instance, can I plug this equation A into the calculator as is? No. no. Okay. So, you know, we're kind of looking at two different extremes here. The ones on the front page were more the graph by hand type. Okay. This is, okay, in order to graph an graphing calculator, we need to what? Need to solve for Y. You might even have to complete the square to do this. Oh. Okay, you're going to type the equation into y in your calculator, or maybe you have to type two equations, one into y1 and one into y2, and you're going to push the graph button. So, let's look at some of these examples real quick. A. Thoughts on how to solve for y? I like it. Square root it. We square root the left, we're going to square root the right. And remember, guys, we're getting ready to plug this into your calculator. Do you have to make it very neat? Nope. No. Not really. So when I square root this, I'm going to have y minus 4 equals the square root of 8 times x minus 3. I wouldn't even change anything there. Now, before you proceed, there's one little thing that no one's told me to put yet. Plus or minus. Oh, God. I just put that there. Okay, so you have to put a plus or minus. 
because we just took the square root in an equation setting. And you always put plus or minus when you take the square root in an equation setting. And I always read And you can't say I've never said that. Me too. Okay, now how do I solve for y? If it's minus 4, we're going to add 4. When I write this, I'm going to write this as y equals 4 plus or minus the square root of 8 times x minus 3. Or the square root of 8x minus 24 if you prefer. Okay, guys. Graph it. Grab your calculators and graph it. Where's the plus or minus button? There you go. There is an what? Plus. So, oh, wait, hint number there? two up top. This is where step number two comes into play because it says type the equations into y1 and sometimes y2. You have to do both equations. <clears throat> yes, you'll graph them both at the same time. So, I'm not prepared, so I have to type this in too. I'm going to do 4 plus the square root of 8 times x minus 3. And I'm going to do 4 minus the square root of 8 times x minus 3. I'm going to do zoom 6 because, you know, I have no idea what my calculator last graphed. Okay. Does this make sense? Yes. Now, notice. Do you see the parabola there? There's a parabola. Okay, it's two halves of a parabola. Your calculator is not going to connect those exactly. Okay. So your calculator is not going to connect those exactly, but you get the idea, right? And that's what you should be doing. Now, could you tell me where the vertex is? How else should I have known the vertex was at 3, 4? Oh, was this was this particular one? Did it happen to be in a form where here's h and here's k, and you can even still here's h and here's k. It's just in a different form. Okay. Now in homework, what will I expect you to do? I think this is 40, 42, and 46, if I recall. Should I see this work? Do you want us to like draw? Like and then I'm gonna ask you to sketch a graph. It doesn't have to be fancy. But I'm gonna ask you to sketch a graph. So my graph here I would ask that you attempt to pinpoint where the vertex is and the fact that we just talked about the vertex being at 3 4 is good. The other thing I sometimes ask you to try and do is can you see where it's crossing any axes? This one only crosses the x-axis approximately 5. It's not exactly 5 technically, but it's approximately 5. And I'm fine with it's approximately 5. Now, I can never, this graph is always, I don't know. The way I draw this, I can never. Because technically this parabola needs to be very wide. I don't know. <laughs> but okay you got the idea there yes so that was a pretty easy one um time wise i'm going to talk about b but then we're going to do c because c is more important and <coughs> why is b not that important you have a three y term I guess I can do this real quick. I just won't take time to graph it. So I'm going to keep the 3y here, and I'm going to move everybody. I'm going to subtract x squared. I'm going to add 7x. I'm going to add 2, and there's already a 9 there. 2 plus 9 is going to end up being 11. So I'm going to have negative, 7, or negative x squared plus 7x plus 11 all divided by 3. Could you put it in your calculator that way? Yes. yes. Okay. You get the gist there. I'm not going to take time to graph it because it is important I get to see. 
Why is it so important to get to see what is the catch? There's a y squared. There's a y term. So hint number one. Solve for y. Sometimes you have to complete the square. So first thing I want is I want you to isolate the y terms. So I'm going to keep y squared. I'm going to keep the plus 2y, and then I'm going to move the 6x and move the 13. I'm going to leave a gap. Stupid gap. <laughs> or you can rewrite it and leave a gap in the next step. Whatever floats your boat. So I have y squared plus 2y equals 6x minus 13. I isolated my y terms. Okay, so when we talk about this normally, we talk about it as you want to get x squared plus bx by itself. Except in this case, we're talking y's, right? How do we complete the square? you got to use the b formula. Yeah, what is that b formula thing? No, that's not right. B over 2 quantity squared. Okay, that's how we're going to complete the square. So, what is B here? 2. two. So that means I'm going to do 2 divided by 2, quantity squared. 2 divided by 2 is 1, squared is 1. Now, what do I do with this 1? Add 1 to that side. You have to add 1 on the left. If you add 1 on the left of an equation... Actually, because we're working on two different sides of the equation, if we add on the left, we're adding on the right. The add-subtract thing, you're not imagining things. We did that, but that's when we were working within the same side of the equation. Okay? So, on the left, the whole point of this is that once you complete the square, it factors. It factors into identical parentheses. Y squared is going to break up into y and y, or the square root of y squared is y. What multiplies through 1 and adds to be 2? 1 and 1, right? Or what's the square root of 1? That's what you really need to ask. 1. My middle sign is plus, so this is plus. Do you remember? It's factoring into two parentheses, right? Product of c, sum of b. My right is 6x minus 12. Can you solve this now? If it's y plus 1 squared, I'm going to square root. square root. And this is just like the first one, right? Square root of the left is y plus 1. What is the square root of 6x minus 12? <coughs> plus or minus. Plus or minus so the square root of 6x minus 12. Subtract 1 y is negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 6x minus 12. You would again have to put it into your, your calculator twice because you have a plus and a minus. Okay, this one up here ends up being an upside down parabola. This one here ends up being a sideways parabola. I want something more official than that though. Okay. Give me an idea of the vertex, that type of thing. Did I get the basics to you? Yeah. Okay. Homework. Do it. Okay. Do it. Come back with it done tomorrow. We'll talk about homework questions, and then we will start into ellipses. And ellipses will take us a couple of days.